let's drag you back almost two million years because scientists are saying that a skull discovered in Georgia suggests that early humans were a single species. Now that would mean rethinking a whole understanding of human evolution. <laughs> Well, there they are, looking very happy. The find in Georgia causing great excitement among the scientists who've been working on this project, led by the Georgian National Museum. It's the largest collection of well-preserved early human remains known anywhere in the world. I'm pleased to say uh, one of the co-authors of the research, uh, Professor Christoph Zolikofer, joins us now from Zurich. Here with me in the studio, our science reporter, Melissa Hogan-Boom. Uh, thank you very much, Christoph, for joining us. You're very excited too. I mean, just tell us, how has this changed our understanding of early man? Well, uh, it's probably interesting for you to see a copy of the recent find that we describe in, in today's science. And here you have him. Oh, wow. So, but it's small, you can see. If I move it uh, to my head, next to my head, you see how small it is and how small his brain was? So that's, that's considerably smaller than what we have today. But what we actually can see is that um, the population that we find at Manis in Georgia, 1.8 million years, that these five individuals there uh, belong to one single species that we call Homo erectus. And, I mean... What do you, I know you've just mentioned that the, the brain is a lot smaller than, than the brains we have to date. What else have you noticed about the skulls? I mean, they look very, very different. Yes, they do. And it's exactly if you look at the, at the whole face, so if I put the lower jaw, you see these guys have much bigger jaws than we have today, which means two million years of evolution um, led to an enormous increase in brain size, but at the same time to a reduction of uh, the size of the face, of the teeth, and so on. And, I mean, you've got a copy there that you're showing us, but it's still fantastic to actually see what this looked like. What was it like when this discovery was made? We saw the absolute joy amongst the scientists who uncovered it. Yeah, basically, that's a moment that uh, our science of paleoanthropology had been waiting for since more than 100 years, because it's the first and only completely preserved skull of such an early hominid. We are actually watching it, uh, Christophe. Uh, we've got pictures while you're talking of it actually yeah. being taken out incredibly delicately there with a huge amount of applause. Uh, I can see the significance and, and the real uh, excitement that it's caused. We've got Melissa here in the studio, our science reporter. And Melissa, not actually everyone agreeing, despite the, the joy there, not everyone agreeing with this research findings. That's right. Making such a big change in our view of evolution, that's quite, you know, it's going to get a lot of scientists think, disagreeing. And actually a team that looked at skulls from Africa two million years ago, they say, they, they've looked and they say there's several distinct species and they still believe that because they actually say that using the methods of analysis that they used, they were looking at too broad an overview of the skulls rather than looking at the specific brow ridges, for example. And also another researcher I spoke to, Professor Chris Stringer from the Natural History Museum in London, he said it's extremely doubtful that there was only one evolving lineage of human because the differences in food they ate, the differences in brain size, so the diversity at the time actually helped drive evolution, which which eventually led to Homo erectus and us. Right, so where does this leave us with these two varying accounts? It's, it's difficult to say because until we have more complete remains from Africa, we won't really know. So in Georgia, these are the most complete versions they've ever discovered. In Africa, some of the remains you know, are very small and they have to reconstruct them. So hopefully the archaeologists will start digging and we'll hopefully find more and more as time goes on. Professor Zolikofer, I mean, when you hear that there's a sort of divided view about this, uh, what was your response? Well, my response is very simple, actually. Uh, apparently, these authors simply dismissed that we did the other part of the work. So what does that mean? It simply means that when you try to apply the species discrimination schemes that uh, the scientists developed for the African fossils, if you apply that to the five Tmanisi specimens, then what you would need to do is to actually split a given individual into two species, and that's something which is biologically impossible. But of course, I mean, we propose a, a shift of paradigm, and in that sense, we are a little bit like the kid in the famous fairy tale of the emperor's new clothes. 
So it's difficult to see that the emperor is actually naked. <laughs> um, I mean, just putting this into what we can take from it nowadays, whenever there's a scientific discovery, Professor Zolikofer, people say, well, how does that help us now? I mean, how would you sum up the benefits of knowing this? Well, it's a change of perspective in the sense that we focus our interest now on population and evolutionary biology. And we go a little bit away from categorizing things into different species without actually having an idea how they were adapted to different ecological niches. Okay, Pr Professor Christoph Zolikoff uh, joining us from Zurich and Melissa Hogenboom, our correspondent, uh, science correspondent here in the studio. Thank you so much to you both and thank you very much for showing us your copy skull. Fascinating to see it. He says bye-bye. Okay, we say bye too. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that before on live TV. Thank you so much, Professor. Bye.